हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक सो वी वे डिस्कसिंग इलेक्ट्रोकेमिस्ट्री इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन इक्लिब्रियम कॉन्स्टेंट एंड डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ हाफ सेल्स आर प्रेजेंट आफ्टर दिस लेक्चर यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दी कॉन्सेप्ट सो आफ्टर दिस लेक्चर वील स्टार्ट विद लॉड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट द लेक्चर सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस नर्स इक्वेशन ओके सो नर्स इक्वेशन इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्सप्रेशन that will give us the emf of the cell at any other condition which is not standard okay so if we are having a say a reaction something like this so say <coughs> this is the overall reaction okay suppose we are having a reaction something like this okay so we'll say that the overall emf of this cell would be the e not cell okay so e not of this reaction so we'll write the oxidation half a is oxidizing into a plus and the reduction half where b2 plus is reducing into b so we'll get the individual half cell emfs okay so we'll get the overall e not cell that would be the e not reduction potential of the cathode minus e not reduction potential of anode so this would be e cell equals to e not cell minus 0.059 upon okay number of electron exchange here is 2 okay you can see that in anode a was oxidizing into a plus okay whereas in cathode b2 plus was reducing into b okay so if you add the two reactions so obviously you have multiplied the first reaction with 2 so that the electron gets cancelled out so the number of electron exchange between cathode and anode in the overall reaction is 2 okay so n would be 2 so this would be e not cell minus 0.059 upon 2 into log of reaction quotient okay so reaction quotient in this would be concentration of a plus raised to power 2 because b is in the solid state so we don't write it in the expression divided by concentration of b2 plus okay so this would be the overall emf of the cell so we define that nurse equation is basically e cell equals to e not cell minus 0.0591 upon n into log of reaction quotient okay so this was the formula which we derived in the previous lecture so you have to just remember this formula most of the questions will be based on this formula itself okay so let us look at the question over here so this says that the emf of the following galvanic cells there are four galvanic cells which we have been given to us they are represented by emf is represented by e1 e2 e3 and e4 now the question says that which of the following is true okay out of these four which of the following is true so let us <coughs> look at the first reaction so the in the first we have already discussed that the left hand side represents anode okay so we know that in anode oxidation would be occurring okay so this would be the reaction so <clears throat> we know that the reduction potential of zinc 2 plus changing into zinc is minus 0.76 volt okay similarly if you look at the this is a salt bridge this right hand side is your cathodic half or the cathode half cell so here reduction takes place so you can see that the species which is getting reduced is copper 2 plus it will take up two electron and change into copper solid okay so e not in this case reduction potential of copper 2 plus electrode is 0.34 okay so when we add this we'll get the overall reaction so there are two electrons involved okay so they will get cancelled out so when we add this we'll get zinc solid plus copper 2 plus aqueous okay changing into zinc 2 plus aqueous plus copper okay so this is the overall reaction okay so e not cell of this reaction would be reduction potential of cathode minus reduction potential of anode so reduction potential of cathode is 0.34 reduction potential of anode is 0.76 so this would be 1.1 volt okay so they will it will generate 1.1 volt of emf under standard condition okay now we'll write nurse equation of this so we'll say that e cell will be equal to 
E naught cell which is 1.1 minus 0 0.059 upon 2 okay, into log of concentration of zinc 2 plus divided by concentration of copper 2 plus. Okay. Hope this is clear to you now. Now different concentration has been given to us. Now the concentration in the first case of zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus is 1. So when you put 1 over there, so log 1 becomes 0. So E1 would be 1.1 volt. Okay. Now in the second case, the concentration of zinc 2 plus is 0 0.1 and that of copper is 1 molar. Okay. So when you put zinc 2 plus as 0 0.1 molar and copper as 1, so this is basically log of 1, log of 10 is to minus 1, sorry. So this will come out, okay. So this will become 1.1 plus 0 0.059. So E2 would be 1.1 plus 0 0.0 for our simple calculation, I will take this value as 0 0.06, okay. So when I take this as 0 0.06, it will become 0 0.03, okay. So the EMF of this would become 1.13. Okay. Now, let us look at the third. Third data says that zinc 2 plus is 1 molar and copper 2 plus is 0.1 molar. So, when you divide this will become log of 10. Okay, 1 divided by 0.1 that is log 10. Log 10 is 1. So, this you will just have to subtract 1.1 minus. I am approximating this as 0 0.06. So, 1.1 minus 0 0.06 divided by 2. So, E3 in this case would become 1.1 minus 0 0.0. 3, so this will come out to be 1.07 volt. Okay, so E1 is 1.1, E2 is 1.13, E3 is 1.07. Now, if you look at this data, fourth, okay, zinc 2 plus is 0.1 molar and copper 2 plus is also 0.1 molar. So, they will get cancelled out, log 1 is 0. So, again, we will get EMF as 1.1 volt only. Okay, so you can see that the E2 is maximum followed by E1. Okay, E1 and E4 has the same value. So, E2 is greater than E1 equal to E4 and that is also greater than E3. So, the answer would be D. So, this is the basic application of Nernst equation where we are writing the cathodic half, anodic half and then we are writing the overall reaction. We are calculating the value of E0 cell. Then using the Nernst equation, I am going to calculate the value of E cell. Okay. So, while solving the electrochemistry question, just keep in mind that you have to always write the reactions. Okay, because reaction writing will help you in understanding what data are given to you and what like is the main question that has been asked over there. Okay, so always remember to write the equation even though it is an objective question that will introduce a very good practice and that would help you in solving the difficult level questions very easily. Okay, now let us look at this question. Okay, so this says that we are having okay a half cell is given to us because there is an electron that still exists. So, this is a half cell reaction. Obviously, reduction is happening. So, we have taken dichromate ion and it is getting reduced into Cr3 plus at pH equals to 2. So, the question says that calculate the electrode potential, the standard electrode potential for the following reaction. So, standard reduction potential is given to us as 1.33 volt. Okay, This says that what is the overall potential at pH equals to 2. Okay. So, this has been given to us. So, it is just an application of Nernst equation. So, these questions will help you in just using the Nernst equation very easily. Okay. So, this is a reduction reaction. So, we know that the EMF of this particular half reaction would be E0, okay, that is reduction potential of the half cell minus 0 0.059 upon, okay. If you look at the value of n, you can clearly see that the electron okay number of electron over here is was 6 so the value of n would become 6 into log of concentration of cr3 plus whole square okay water is a liquid again we don't have to take in the expression divided by concentration of dichromate ion okay its stoichiometry is one only into concentration of h plus raised to power 40 okay so, this is the Nernst equation for this half cell. Okay, Nernst equation can be applied in the half cell as well as the complete cell. So, this will be the EMF of this particular half reaction. Okay, now when pH is equals to 2, so we know that pH is minus log of H plus. So, when this is equal to 2, so H plus will be equal to 10 H to minus 2 molar. 
okay so if we just use this data over here so we know that e naught is 1.33 minus i will approximately take it as 0 0.06 okay for my calculations to become easy otherwise in je exam you will be given this value okay rt by f value will be given to you in most of the question it says that you use 0 0.06 so that the calculation becomes easy into log of concentration of chromium ion chromium ion you can see over here the concentration is 1 okay divided by concentration of dichromate ion so dichromate ion concentration is 1 into h plus ion so concentration of h plus ion is 10 raised to minus 2 okay the stoichiometry of h plus is 14 so this will become 10 raised to minus 2 raised to power 14 so e of this half cell would become 1.33 minus 0 0.01 into log of 10 raised to power 28 I can write this as okay so E cell E of the half cell would become 1.33 minus 0 0.01 into 28 okay log base 10 into 10 raised to power 28 is always 28 so E of this would become 1.33 minus 0.28 which is equal to 1.05 volt okay so emf of this half cell would be 1.05 volt okay so this is the, just the basic application of nurse equation so you should first understand how a cell is operating what are the basic requirements what is standard electrode potential what is electrode potential what does reduction potential mean what does oxidation potential mean what is a nurse equation how do you find e naught cell okay how, and how is gibbs free energy related to the emf of the cell okay so these are the basic points that you should know before we build on to the higher level problem solving okay now let us discuss about equilibrium constant now suppose if in any electrochemical cell if a equilibrium is established so how do we find the equilibrium constant using the concept of galvanic cell okay so we know that delta g naught is always minus rtl in k equilibrium okay this we have already derived delta g was equal to delta g naught plus rtl and q okay so we know that delta g is always equal to delta g naught plus rtl and q okay where q is the reaction quotient in this case so when k is equal to equilibrium constant okay so that means we are talking about equilibrium we know that the gibbs free energy is minimum at equilibrium okay so the change in gibbs free energy is zero so at equilibrium we know that delta g is zero and q becomes equal to equilibrium constant so we'll write this as 0 equal to delta g naught plus rt ln q so sorry rt ln this q now is being replaced by equilibrium constant because we are talking about equilibrium okay so this will become okay so delta g naught in this case would be minus rt ln equilibrium constant okay hope this is clear to you so delta g naught is minus rt ln equilibrium constant okay so we know that delta g naught is minus rt ln equilibrium constant now we also know that delta g naught is equal to minus n into f into e naught cell okay we have already defined that <coughs> gives the change in gives free energy is the maximum electric electrical work that can be obtained from any thermodynamic system okay so that is equal to the product of charge into potential so the total charge is n into f n into f is the total number of moles of electron that is being transferred into the potential that is e naught cell so delta g naught is also minus n f into e naught cell that is equal to minus rtl in k equilibrium so we can write e naught cell as minus minus gets cancelled out so we can write this as rt by nf into ln equilibrium constant now if we change this into log base 10 so e naught cell would become 2.303 into r into t upon nf into log base 10 equilibrium constant okay so we know the value of r which is 8.314 temperature is 298 kelvin we are at standard condition f is 96500 coulomb so when you plug all these value we get the value of e naught cell as 0 0.0591 upon n into log of base 10 equilibrium constant okay so hope this is clear to you so this is how you will find 
equilibrium constant using the E naught value. Okay, hope this expression is clear to you. So this is again a very important formula. We can directly get the equilibrium constant as n into E naught cell divided by 0 0.059. Okay, now n here is the total number of electrons that are transferred between cathode and anode. Okay, hope this is clear to you. Now if we look at the say we are having a Daniel cell okay, in which copper 2 plus was reacting with zinc and forming copper plus zinc 2 plus. Okay, so this was a reaction in the Daniel cell. So we knew that E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.059 upon N over here is 2. You can see that between cathode and anode two electrons are exchanged. So the value of N is 2 into log of concentration of zinc 2 plus upon concentration of copper 2 plus. Okay. So what happens initially is this is a positive quantity E naught cell because if the reaction is spontaneous E naught cell has to be positive. Okay. So that is how we check whether a cell is spontaneous or not. For a cell to be spontaneous so that we are able to draw current from it E naught cell should be positive. Okay. So E naught cell is positive as the reaction proceeds more amount of zinc 2 plus will be formed. Okay, so the amount of zinc 2 plus will keep on increasing and the amount of copper 2 plus will keep on decreasing. So what will happen this quantity will become larger with time okay, because more zinc 2 plus is formed and less amount of copper 2 plus is left. So the ratio will be a higher value. So this value will keep on increasing. So eventually what will happen this E naught cell minus this quantity will become 0. Okay, at that point we will say that equilibrium has been established. So we also say that E cell is also equal to 0 okay, at equilibrium. So hope this is clear to you. So we are saying that at equilibrium E cell is 0 and also delta G is 0. Okay, hope this is clear to you. So I am saying that as the reaction proceeds we know that more of product would be formed. So zinc 2 plus is forming and copper 2 plus is reacting. Okay, so the amount of, or the concentration of copper 2 plus is decreasing. So the ratio will always increase. So when you take a log and multiply this factor, so obviously this term is increasing. So at some point of time, it will become when E naught cell becomes equal to this quantity, quantity E cell will become equal to 0. We will say that equilibrium has been established because after that point, okay, there will not be any change in concentration of zinc 2 plus or copper 2 plus. We know that at equilibrium, the concentration gets fixed. But it does not indicate that the reaction has stopped. It indicates that reaction has become dynamic in nature. Okay, the rate of forward reaction, the rate at which zinc two plus is formed, becomes equal to the rate at which zinc two plus is consumed in the backward direction. So that there is no overall change in the concentration. So this is how you can find the EMF. Okay, so E cell becomes zero, delta G becomes equal to zero. So if you plug the value over here, so E cell will be zero. This is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.059 upon 2 because now we are at equilibrium. So we will say that the equilibrium constant for this reaction should be concentration of zinc 2 plus upon concentration of copper 2 plus because they are the only ionic species, rest of them are solid. So we are not going to take in the equilibrium expression. So this will become log of Kc. So these quantity, the ratio of this quantity becomes equilibrium constant. So we will say that E naught cell becomes equal to 0 0.059 divided by 2 into log base 10 equilibrium constant. So you can find the equilibrium constant from this expression also. You can also use the expression both are same only. So E naught cell we know okay, and the value was 2 for a <coughs> Daniel cell. So we will land up at the same expression. Okay, So there is the same expression the only uh, concept that we applied to understand the equilibrium was different. This basically dealt with the thermodynamic parameters. This basically worked with working of an electrochemical cell. So we will always say that whenever an equilibrium has been established, delta G will become 0 and E cell would become 0. Okay? And the ratio of the concentration will become equilibrium constant because at equilibrium that only represents equilibrium constant. Okay? So I hope this is clear to you. This is again a very important concept that can be asked. Okay, so let's solve a question on this to understand the concept. Okay, so just have a look at this question. Now this says that okay, there's a arrow over here. So this says that 
calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So in this reaction, we are reacting iron 2 plus with cerium 4 plus and it is changing into iron 3 plus and cerium 3 plus. Okay. So first we will write the anodic half cell or the anode. Okay. So we know that at anode oxidation take place. So we can see that iron 2 plus is getting oxidized into iron 3 plus. Okay. Similarly, if you look at cathode, cerium 4 plus would get reduced. Okay. So, cerium 4 plus is taking up an electron and changing into, we have been given that it is changing into cerium 3 plus. Okay. So, this is the basic reaction that is happening because this reaction has been given to us. Okay. So, the overall reaction would become, okay, these electron would get cancelled out. So, overall reaction would be iron 2 plus aqueous plus cerium 4 plus aqueous changing into iron 3 plus aqueous plus cerium 3 plus aqueous. Okay. So, if you want to write the E naught cell, okay, so E naught cell overall EMF of this cell, so this would be the reduction potential of cathode minus reduction potential of anode. Now, reduction potential of anode is given, sorry, reduction potential of cathode is given to us as 0.68. So, this would be 0.68 minus a reduction potential of anode, okay. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I just made a mistake over here. So, we know that, I have just read the data wrong. So, we know that cerium 4 plus is getting reduced. So, the reduction potential of cerium 4 plus is 1.44. So, E naught cell would be reduction potential of cerium 4 plus that is 1.44 minus reduction potential of iron 3 plus. Okay. Now, in this case, we have been given the value as 0.68. Okay. So, when you do this, E naught cell becomes equal to 0.76 volt. Okay. So, this is the value of E naught cell. Okay, hope this is clear to you. Okay, now we want to find the equilibrium constant. So, we will say that I can either use like between the two equations, I can use any of those. So, if I want to write the E cell, so I will say that E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.059 upon N we know is number of electron exchange is 1 log of concentration of iron 3 plus into concentration of cerium 3 plus divided by concentration of iron 2 plus into concentration of cerium 4 plus. Okay. So, E cell we know at equilibrium will be 0. So, E naught cell is 0 0.76 minus 0 0.059 into log. This will become expression for the equilibrium constant. Okay. Equilibrium constant of this would be iron 3 plus concentration raised to power 1 at equilibrium into concentration of cerium 3 plus at equilibrium divided by concentration of iron 2 plus raised to power 1 at equilibrium into concentration of cerium 4 plus at equilibrium. So, this would be the equilibrium constant only. So, we will write log Kc as 0.76 divided by 0 0.059. So, I can write Kc as 10 raised to power 0 0.76 divided by 0 0.059. Okay. Hope this is clear to you. Okay. So, we can directly use the formula also. So, formula was basically E naught cell equal to 0 0.059 upon N which was 1 into log of equilibrium constant. Okay. So, we will get the same expression only. Okay. So, E naught cell is 0 0.76. So, this will be 10 h to 0 0.76 divided by 0 0.059. Okay. So, it depends upon you if you are able to memorize the formula easily and if you do a lot of practice. So, that formula will eventually be there in your mind. So, will you be able to solve through this formula as well, but you can apply the normal concept also to get the right answer. Okay. So, hope this is clear to everyone. So, this is a very basic question that can be formed on the equilibrium constant. Okay. Now, a slight modification of this question can become, we will be given some concentration of iron 2 plus and cerium 4 plus initially. Okay. So, you will be asked to find the equilibrium concentration. So, from this data, first you will get the equilibrium constant value. Okay, you will get the value of Kc. Now, you can like Kc we know is equal to iron 3 plus into cerium 3 plus divided by 
iron 2 plus into concentration of cerium 4 plus. Okay. So, from this we know the value of Kc, we know the initial concentration. So, we will just do the stoichiometric calculations and we will calculate the value of the iron 2 plus or cerium 4 plus reacted, we will get the final equilibrium concentration. So, you can see that this question becomes partially of electrochemistry and partially of chemical equilibrium. So, this is how questions are framed in IIT that touches two or more concepts from different chapters so that it checks the basic foundation of all the chapters. Okay. Hope this is clear to you. Okay. Next comes is the very important uh, factor that you should know is reversible and irreversible cell. Now, we know that a Daniel cell is producing E naught of 1.1 volt. Okay. Now, if I connect this cell with an external battery. Okay. Now, this is a Daniel cell whose E naught cell overall E naught cell was 1.1 volt. Now, I am connecting it with an external battery. Now, suppose the external bat battery has a EMF greater than 1.1. Okay. So, what would happen if the EMF is greater than 1.1? So, the reaction that was happening at anode okay it would now become cathode okay so we say that reversible cells are those in which reversible reactions are involved so reactions can be reversed so if we apply a greater potential the reaction will get reversed so the anode will become cathode and cathode will become anode these cells can be brought back to their initial state by applying the potential difference okay so i am saying that we are having a daniel cell whose e naught cell was 1.1 volt okay to this i have attached an external battery whose emf is greater than 1.1 okay so this is the external battery which i have connected with the daniel cell now we can see that the external emf is more than that of produced by the cell so the flow of current would change okay initially we knew that in anode oxidation is taking place the electron is moving from anode to cathode okay so the flow of current would be from cathode to anode but now when you have applied an emf greater than that produced by the cell so the direction of the current would get reversed so now the current would start from anode and it would go into cathode okay so in this case we are going to say that the cell reactions would reverse okay hope this is clear to you Okay, so, when you are applying a potential greater than 1.1 to a Daniel cell which is producing a E naught of 1.1, so the reactions would get okay, reversed. So, at anode now initially what was happening zinc was getting oxidized into zinc 2 plus. Now, when you apply a potential of greater than 1.1, so what would happen here zinc 2 plus would start getting reduced into zinc. Okay, so, it would behave something like an electrolytic cell now. And the at the cathode what would happen in the cathode initially there was a reduction of copper 2 plus changing into copper but because you have applied a external potential which is greater than that produced by the cell. So, at cathode now oxidation of copper would start taking place. Similarly, if the E naught cell is equal to 1.1 volt and you apply EMF less than 1.1 volt. Okay, so, there would be no change as such because the external EMF is less than that produced by the cell. So, basically this would decrease the overall current. Okay. So, at anode oxidation will be taking place and at cathode reduction would be taking place. Now, at E cell equal to 1.1 volt when E naught cell was equal to 1.1 volt and the external EMF applied is 1.1 volt. Okay. So, this would again cause no change because both of the like opposing and the directing potential is same. So, the net current would become 0 and the cell would become non-operating. Okay. So, reversible cells are those cells in which reactions can be reversed by changing the external potential difference okay. and they can be brought back to their initial state by applying the initial potential initial conditions. Okay. So, they can be brought to their initial state by applying external potential difference. Okay. So, at the start we knew that we had zinc and it was changing into zinc 2 plus ion. Okay. Now, when you apply external EMF greater than that of EMF of the cell, so what would happen zinc 2 plus would get start getting reduced and would get deposited at the zinc. So, we will get back the zinc which initially reacted. So, we have reversed the reaction by applying external potential difference. Okay. So, this is the basic logic of
reversible and irreversible cell. Irreversible cell would not follow the same condition. So, when you apply the external potential difference, initial state would not be reached. Okay. So, let us look at some of the half electrodes. Now, this half electrode concept, if it is clear to you, most of the questions in electrochemistry becomes very easy. The problem, like the general problem with us is, we don't understand, we don't try to focus much on the theoretical aspect, we just want to go for the numerical solving. But if you are clear with all the basic level theories, the question solving becomes a very easy thing. Okay. So, let us talk about the different half electrodes. If you are clear with different half electrodes, these half electrodes would be joined together to form a full electrode, full cell and questions will be based on those full cells. So, if you know the half cells very well, if you know what kind of reactions are happening, then the overall cell is very easy to understand. Okay. So, the first example is that of gas ion electrode. Okay. This we have introduced little bit in the previous lecture when we were talking about hydrogen and H plus ion electrodes. Okay. So, that is called as a gas ion electrode. So, basically in a gas ion electrode, we pass a gas into the aqueous solution containing the ion of that gas. Okay. So, gas electrode constitutes a gas passing into the solution containing its own ion. Okay. So, the common example is that of hydrogen electrode. Okay. So, if you look at the setup, I have already told you yesterday. So, there is a platinum wire which is dipped in the HCl solution or a acid solution. So, this solution is having H plus ion. Okay. We have dipped a platinum wire in it and through this we are sending hydrogen gas at one bar. Now, this hydrogen gas through platinum can enter into the solution. Okay. So, there would be a electrode potential that would be set up. Okay. So, temperature is 298 Kelvin and we have taken a platinum foil over there. Okay. So, this is called as a standard hydrogen electrode. Okay. So, this is called as a standard hydrogen. Okay. I hope this is clear to everyone. This is called as standard hydrogen electrode. Also, it is written as SHE, she electrode. Okay. So, in the she electrode, what we are doing, because we have written the term standard, it means that the temperature has to be 298 Kelvin, pressure has to be 1 bar and the concentration of all the species or their activity has to be unity. Okay. So, in the standard hydrogen cell, what we are doing, we have dipped a platinum wire into the solution containing the H plus ion. Now, the source of this H plus ion can be any acid like dilute sulfuric acid or dilute HCl. Okay. So, we have dipped this platinum wire in the solution containing the H plus and through the tube, we are sending or bubbling hydrogen into the solution. Okay. Hope this is clear to you. So, I have told you in the previous lecture as well, we could have directly pumped H2 into the solution. But the problem is when the oxidation or reduction is happening, there has to be a source of electron coming into the solution or going out of the solution. So, that is why we are taking an inert electrode which is not participating in the reaction and which is platinum. Okay. Someone asked me that why sir we cannot take any other electrode. You can use but they are little expensive. So, to make it economical, we are using the best or the cheapest electrode that is available to you that does not hamper the overall EMF of the cell. Okay. So, if this is present at the anodic half, okay. so if it is present in the anodic half or this is acting as an anode. So, when it is acting as an anode, okay, just remember the convention that we did yesterday. So, if it is acting as an anode, it has to undergo oxidation. So, hydrogen gas would undergo oxidation okay, and it would form H plus ion and electrons would be evolved. Okay. Now, if it is an anode, we know that it would be on the left hand side. Okay, right hand side was our cathode, they are connected through a salt bridge and externally they are connected by a conducting wire. So, when H hydrogen is getting oxidized, the electrons will come out through the platinum wire and enter into the copper, enter into the cathode electrode. Okay, hope this is clear to you. So, this is for the anode. So, EMF of this is again 0. Okay, so, we say that the standard hydrogen electrode has always a EMF E naught as 0 volt. Okay. So, <clears throat> if we want to write the cell notation of this, so we know that because this is present at the anode, so what we should do over here is we will go inside this. Okay. So, when I go inside this, I will catch hold of platinum. So, first I will get platinum, I will encounter platinum wire, then while I am going down, we will get hydrogen also. So, this is hydrogen gas, 
okay when you go inside the solution we get h plus ion okay so this is how you will write when this is acting as a anodic half okay so you can write this as h2 changing into h plus okay so it's standard oxidation potential is zero now if it is acting as a cathode okay so we know that at cathode reduction would take place so this h plus ion would take up electrons okay h plus ion will take one electron and form h atom so h atom can combine with other h atom and form hydrogen gas so 2 h plus will combine with 2 electron and it will give 2 h atom they will combine together to give hydrogen gas okay so if it is acting as a cathode now we know that cathode is always in the right hand side okay left hand and left hand side is always the anode so what we do we start from anode go into the solution through the salt bridge into the cathode and then we write the notation so if it is acting as a cathode so we knew that there would be something at the anode okay so through salt bridge we'll come into this solution so when we come into the solution we'll first encounter the h plus ion so we'll have the h plus ion okay now i'm just trying to go outside so when i go inside we'll get the hydrogen gas okay so we'll have hydrogen gas okay and then I can catch hold of the platinum wire. So this is platinum. Okay, so this is how you write the cell notation of this half cell. Okay, so EMF again of this is reduction potential is again zero volt. Okay, so standard hydrogen electrode has always a E naught as zero. Okay, so this is one important point that you should know. Okay, so this is how you are representing it. This is how you are representing it. Okay, now we can also write the EMF of this at any other condition. So EMF of this half cell would become E naught. Okay, we are talking about this reaction. Okay, so this would become E naught H2 changing into H plus. Okay, if we are talking about the oxidation potential. So we want to find out the oxidation potential of hydrogen changing into H plus. So this would be E naught oxidation potential of hydrogen changing into H plus minus 0 0.059 upon 2 into log of H plus concentration whole square. Okay, so if we apply Nernst equation to this, we will get this expression. If we apply Nernst equation to this equation, okay, so reduction potential okay, of hydrogen changing into H plus ion, sorry, because we are talking about reduction potential, it has to be H plus changing into hydrogen. So we'll say that H plus changing into hydrogen is equal to, okay, E naught of this because we are talking about reduction potential. So I'm just writing the reduction potential. Here I have written oxidation reaction. So I'm talking about all oxidation species, okay. So E of this half cell would become E naught that is reduction potential of hydrogen changing into H plus, hydrogen changing into H plus changing into. Okay, H plus changing into hydrogen. So we are talking about E naught H plus changing into hydrogen minus 0 0.059 divided by N we know is 2 over here. Okay, electrons, number of electrons is 2 into log of partial pressure of hydrogen raised to power 1 divided by H plus raised to power 2. Okay, so hope this is clear to you. Similarly, in this we have to write the partial pressure of hydrogen as well. Okay, so this is how you write the EMF of the half cell. So EMF of this half cell, okay, so EMF of this half cell would be EMF equals to E naught, E naught of this half cell minus 0 0.059 upon N that is 2 into log of H plus H to power 2 divided by partial pressure of hydrogen. Similarly, if we want to write the a reduction potential of this cell so reduction potential would be standard reduction potential minus 0 0.059 upon 2 log of partial pressure of hydrogen because this is a gas so gas has a partial pressure divided by concentration of h plus raised to power 2 okay so i hope this is clear to you okay so i hope this is clear to you so this is the basic example of gas gas ion electrode now one thing which you should know over here is in a standard hydrogen electrode the emf is always zero okay so when you attach with it anything when you attach with any of the electrode 
either it is a cathode or an anode, whatever E naught overall cell you will be getting would that be of the other cell, okay? Because we know that E naught of the overall cell is E naught cathode minus E naught anode. If hydrogen cell is, if the hydrogen, hydrogen ion cell is present either at anode or cathode, so one quantity would always be zero. So the overall E naught cell would be equal to the reduction or oxidation potential of the half cell. Okay, so through this we can also determine the EMF of the other cells. Okay, like the common example is if we want to find out the EMF of a cell, of a half cell. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to club it with hydrogen. Okay, so that we get a full cell, we will record the EMF. Okay, so the E naught cell will get, we know that because hydrogen is there, so hydrogen reduction potential would be zero. Okay, so whatever EMF is coming. So that would be the EMF of the other cell, okay, of the unknown cell. So that is why this is also called as the primary electrode, okay. So this is basically used to get the EMF of the other electrodes, okay. So this is also a standard electrode. It is also called as a standard electrode because through this or a reference electrode because if you just add it to the another electrode, okay, you will get the full cell whatever E naught you are measuring would be that of the other cell because EMF of hydrogen, hydrogen ion cell is always zero. So this is called as primary reference electrode, okay. So this is primary reference electrode, okay. So hope this is clear to you. So this is called as a primary reference electrode, okay. But this has some demerits also. Now in this we have to always bubble the hydrogen at one bar. So that is again a very difficult thing because we have to continuously maintain the pressure as one bar because once the hydrogen starts reacting its pressure would keep on decreasing. So we have to maintain the pressure of one bar additionally. So that would involve a lot of costing. Also the H plus ion concentration would keep on changing okay because H plus is either produced or reacted in the solution. So H plus concentration will always change so which has to maintain that one molar. Similarly okay when we are talking about the platinum the hydrogen can get poisoned okay when it is in long contact with platinum. So that is why this cell is not further used to determine the electrode potential of unknown electrodes. Okay, So that is why the concept of secondary reference cell came. So gas, gas ion electrode, especially we talk about hydrogen, hydrogen ion electrode is always having a E naught of 0. Whether it is oxidizing or reducing E naught will always be 0. Okay, because its EMF is 0, we can club it with any half electrode. The overall E naught cell which we will be getting will be equal to the E naught of that particular unknown electrode. Okay, because hydrogen is having 0 as its reduction potential, standard reduction potential. So that is why we use it as a primary reference electrode. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you how we are operating this. Okay, another example could be taking chlorine gas and chloride ion okay so what we can do if it is acting as a cathode okay so we know that when it is acting as a cathode so chlorine gas would take up two electrons and change into chloride ion okay so what we have to do we have to take a container in which there is a chloride ion and we can bubble chlorine gas into it so we are having a platinum wire okay so we are bubbling chlorine gas into it okay so if it acts as a cathode so we know that if it is acting as a cathode so it will be present on the right hand side so we'll enter into this through a okay through a salt bridge this shortcut i have already taught you in the previous lecture so we'll write we'll get chloride ion first okay after that when we enter here we'll get hydrogen we'll get chlorine gas and then we'll catch hold of platinum and go outside so this will be the cell notation. Similarly, if it acts as an anode, so we know that this would be present in the left hand side. Okay, so we'll start from here. Okay, so we'll get the chlorine, we'll get the platinum, we'll catch catch hold of the platinum wire, then we'll get the chlorine gas, and in the solution we'll get the chloride ion. Okay, so in this case, what will happen? Chloride ion would get oxidized into chlorine, and two electrons would be liberated. Okay, so we can write the cell notation as platinum chloride ion changing into chlorine. Okay, so this is the 
cathodic representation and this is the anodic representation okay hope this is clear to you so there are many types of gas gas ion electrode one which can have o2oh negative one which can have h plus hydrogen one which can have cl negative cl2 one which can have say br2 br negative so many kinds of gas ion electrodes exist okay out of these two or three are common that are asked in je so hydrogen electrode is very important that is also called as standard hydrogen electrode its emf is zero okay its emf is zero so it means that whenever you are clubbing it with any electrode to form the full cell whatever e not you will be obtaining will be that of the unknown cell so th through this we can predict the we can get the value of the e not of the unknown cell so that is why we are saying it as a reference electrode okay this is a primary reference but the challenges are we have to continuously maintain the pressure of cl2 as 1 atm or 1 bar and we have to maintain the concentration of chloride ion as 1 molar and the hydrogen gets poisoned with time so these are the things that like we which uh, has a limitations experimental limitations so this is cost this is very costly to do so it is not cost effective so new cells of new half cells have been found so that we can get the get the uh, unknown emf of the other cells okay so the next is the common that which we are doing is metal metal ion electrode now when we talk about metal metal ion electrode so in this we are having a metal okay dipped in a metal ion solution so this is a very common electrode that we have been talking from the start suppose we have taken silver rod and we have dipped in the silver nitrate solution so this is basically a metal rod dipped in its own metal ion okay so if it is acting as a cathode if this half cell is acting as a cathode so we'll say that ag plus in the solution would take up the electron and get reduced into silver solid okay so in this we'll say that <coughs> because it is acting as a cathode so it has to be present on the right hand side so we'll enter it through into this chamber through the <coughs> salt bridge so when we enter through salt bridge we'll encounter the silver ion first okay so we'll write silver ion and then we'll get the get hold of silver rod so this is how we represent okay this cell when it is acting as a cathode similarly we talk about this acting as a an anode so in this case silver will get oxidized into silver plus iron okay and it will go into the solution we can write this as silver changing into ag plus because the phases are different so they are separated by a single bar okay so this is how you write the metal metal ion electrode okay so if we if you want to write the e cell of this okay so emf of this half cell would be because we are talking about reduction potential so reduction potential of ag plus changing into ag minus 0.059 upon n log of this is solid so we don't have to take this one divided by concentration of ag plus so we can write the nernst equation as well okay so suppose we want to write the nernst equation for this half cell okay now because this is a oxidation reaction so i can write the over emf okay that is oxidation potential equal to oxidation potential of silver changing into silver ion okay minus 0.059 upon 1 log of ag plus okay because that is there in the product so we can write the oxidation potential of this half cell okay so hope this is clear to you so this is the second kind of electrode the first was gas gas ion electrode the second one is metal metal ion electrode okay now the third one that is very important and this is little confusing and most of the good questions high level questions are formed on this that is we have taken a metal okay and on the metal we have taken a paste of its insoluble salt or a sparingly soluble salt suppose we have taken silver we know that sparingly soluble salt of silver is commonly silver chloride so we have taken a rod of silver we have applied a paste of silver chloride on the rod and we have dipped into the solution containing a ion that is a common ion which is a cl negative in this case so that is basically metal metal insoluble salt and ion electrode okay so let us see the experimental setup of this so you can see that this is a silver rod okay 
Now you can, if you look at this closely, there is a silver rod and a paste of silver chloride is applied on that rod. Okay, so basically we are having a metal and a paste of insoluble salt is applied on the metal and it is dipped in the solution which is containing KCl. Okay, so the solution is saturated with AgCl. Okay, so we are taking a metal, we have applied a metal insoluble salt paste on the metal and we have dipped in the concentrated chloride solution. Okay, so the ion AgCl and Cl negative ion is common. Okay, so hope this is clear to you. Now, when you talk about these types of electrode, so if we talk about this acting as a cathode, okay, so we if we talk about this acting as a cathode, okay, so in a cathode we know that reduction would be taking place. Now, in this the reduction, the species that is undergoing reduction is silver chloride, the sparingly soluble salt, okay, because we know that whenever we have constructed a galvanic cell the electrons from the anode would come into the cathode, anode in basic anode oxidation takes place. So, the electron would come out from anode through the conducting wire into the cathode. So, when it comes into the cathode, there are two things that can happen, okay. Either the Ag silver can take up the electron, okay, or the silver chloride can take up the electron, okay. So, the tendency of silver to reduce is less, okay, whereas AgCl reduction capacity is more. So, the AgCl in the rod, okay, that, uh, that was present on the rod as a paste would take up that electron and change into silver and chloride and would go into the solution, okay. So, when this is acting as a, okay, cathode, so the current, the electron that was coming from the anode into the cathode, the AgCl paste which was there around the silver metal would take up this electron and get reduced into Ag, Ag form would get deposited on the rod only and Cl negative goes into this solution, okay. So, this is what is happening when it is a acting as a cathode. So, if we want to write the cell representation of this, so the cell representation of this would be AgCl, okay, that is solid, okay, this is changing into Ag, same phase, so this is separated by a comma, then Cl negative. Okay, because there that is present in the aqueous solution. Okay, so hope this is clear to you. Similarly, if it acts as an anode, so we know that if it acts as an anode, so what we are going to do? Okay, we are going to say that in the anode, okay, oxidation takes place. So oxidation would take place. So the silver metal, okay, silver metal that was dipped in the KCl solution would react with the chloride ion in the solution and give us AgCl and electron would be liberated, okay. So, the metal that was present, okay, would react with the chloride ion form AgCl and AgCl would again form a, it is insoluble salt, so it would form a paste around the metal, so it would remain deposited in the metal and the electron would be liberated that would go into the cathode, okay. So, when this is acting as a anode and if we represent, if we want to represent in the cell, so we what we will do is again we have to enter into the solution. So, we will take, we will catch silver first, okay. So, we will catch the electrode then we will enter into the solution. So, when you catch the silver electrode there is always a silver chloride paste around it. So, we will encounter silver chloride, okay and then finally when you go into the solution you will get Cl negative, okay. So, this is how you represent the cathode, this is you represent the anode. Now, when we are talking about cathode, so what you can do, we will first enter into the solution. So, we will have Cl negative in the solution, so we will write Cl negative first, okay. So, in the cathodic portion, we will write Cl negative first, okay. So, when it is acting as a cathode, so we will enter into this through a salt bridge. So, we will first encounter the solution, then we will catch hold of the rod. On the rod, first we will encounter the AgCl. So, AgCl is there and then we are having silver, okay. So, this is how we write when it is acting as a cathode. In many textbook, this is also written as Cl negative AgCl, again a bar and Ag to differentiate that one is a metal and other is the sparingly soluble salt. Similarly, here it can be written as Ag, AgCl, Cl negative. Okay, so this is the common notation that you should know. 
Okay, hope this is clear to you. So the EMF of this and the standard condition when the concentration is 3.5 mole per decimeter cube, the standard reduction potential is of this metal insoluble salt is 1.197 volt. This is not important. This is just a data that I wanted to uh, show you, but this is not important in questions that will be given to you. Okay, so this is the example of metal, metal insoluble salt, common ion electrode. Okay, so what we are saying in a metal, metal insoluble salt, common ion electrode, we are taking a metal, we are having a paste of the metal insoluble salt on the rod and we are dipping it in the solution, okay, containing the common ion that is chloride ion. Similar electrode can be a calomel electrode. Now, calomel electrode is again a very important electrode. So, calomel is basically Hg2Cl2 that is mercurous chloride, okay. So, what we are doing, we are taking mercury, okay, mercury is, can be taken as electrode but generally mercury is not solid, so it is liquid. So we are taking a mercury, we will have a paste of mercury, mercurous chloride and we will take dip it in the solution of chloride ion, okay. So let us look at the setup of calomel electrode. So we are having a platinum wire, okay, then we are having a paste of Hg and Hg2Cl2, okay. Now because mercury is a liquid at room temperature, so if you take a mercury rod and if you pass current, Suppose it is solid at that temperature, but when you pass current, electrical energy would be produced due to which heating effect would be produced and the Hg can melt. So we are not going to take Hg rod over here, we are directly going to take a platinum wire. So we will take platinum wire okay, and we will have a paste of Hg, Hg to Cl2 and we will have a saturated KCl solution as well. So this basically constitutes a calomel electrode. Okay? So in calomel electrode, we will say that if it is acting as a cathode, Okay, so in cathode we know that reduction is happening. So the Hg2Cl2 okay, would take up the electrons. Okay, it would take up two electron and change into two Hg plus two Cl negative. Okay, so this is what it happened when this is present as a cathode. So we can say that if we want to write the cell notation of this, okay. So we know that in this case we know that Hg2Cl2 is changing into Hg okay and when you intend to the solution we will get chloride ion. So this is how you represent it okay sometimes chloride ion is written over there also so it is uh, not that okay confusing. So you can also write platinum over here but most of the text does not mention platinum so you if you are not writing you should understand that this is the calomel cell, okay. Now if it is acting as an anode, so we know that, okay, oxidation would take place. So the mercury paste would react with the chloride ion that was present in the solution and form Hg2Cl2, okay, and electron would be liberated out, okay. So when you are talking about this acting as an anode, so anode is always present on the left hand side. Okay, so when you enter into the anode through the platinum wire, so platinum will come first, okay, then we will get Hg, okay, then we will get Hg2Cl2, you can also write this with Hg, Hg2Cl2, okay, then we will get the chloride ion, okay, so this is how you represent this cell, okay, I hope cell notation is very clear to you. Believe me, if you are very good at understanding the different type of half cell, you know all the four or five different type of half cells, half of the question is solved without even touching the pen, okay. You can easily see in the question what kind of half cell is written over there, so automatically the reaction would flash out in your mind and you won't face any difficulty in solving the questions, okay. So the first cell which we discussed was gas, gas ion electrode, so in that a gas was pumped into the gas ion. Okay, so that is called as gas, gas ion electrode. The common example was hydrogen pumped into the H plus ion through platinum wire. Okay, so this is also called as standard hydrogen electrode. Its EMF is always zero. Okay, so that is also called as a primary reference electrode. Similar example could be chlorine pumped into chloride ion solution, O2 pumped into OH negative solution. So they all belong to gas, gas ion electrode. Second example is metal dipped in a its own aqua solution containing the ion. So metal dipped in the metal ion solution. The third example is metal, metal insoluble salt and a common ion. So you take a metal, you have a paste of the insoluble salt around that metal and you dip into the solution containing the common ion 
of that of metal insoluble salt that is ag agcl and cl negative so you should know what are the reactions that are happening at cathode anode and how you are representing that cell okay similar example could be a calomel electrode okay i hope this is clear to you okay so if we want to write say emf of this okay so emf of this reduction potential of this would be reduction potential e not of this minus 0 0.059 upon n, n over here is 2 into log of this is solid ok and like basically this is liquid we are writing it incorrect it should be a liquid because mercury is a liquid ok so that is why we are also separating with the ok bar. So <coughs> e is point e naught minus 0 0.059 upon 2 log of this is liquid into concentration of Cl negative whole square ok. So this is the e naught E cell of this half cell okay so this is the emf reduction potential of this half cell so if the concentration of chloride ion in the solution is fixed okay if the concentration of chloride ion in the solution is fixed that is we are taking a saturated kcl solution so the concentration of chloride ion in the solution is fixed so if this value is fixed e cell will always be a fixed value okay so emf of this half electrode is always fixed okay so again we can combine it with any other unknown electrode we know the emf of the calomel electrode now we combine with the another unknown electrode so whatever e naught value would be getting okay if we subtract the emf of the calomel electrode if it is acting as a cathode or anode that will check okay we will get the emf of the unknown electrode so this is also known as a secondary okay reference electrode this is better than hydrogen okay this is better than gas gas ion electrode SHE electrode because we have to just maintain a saturated solution so we have to dissolve sufficient KCl in the solution so that the solution is saturated and we have don't have to maintain any pressure or uh, active concentration of the ions in the solutions okay so hope this is clear to you so this is called as secondary reference electrode because its EMS is also fixed because if we take the saturated KL, KCl solution ok so the concentration of chloride ion is also fixed so we will get a constant value of this so when you club this half electrode with any other half electrode ok so the E naught cell which you will be getting ok <coughs> either you can subtract the EMF of this electrode or add the reduction potential of this electrode if it is acting as a cathode or anode depending upon the cases you will get the EMF of the unknown electrode that is why this is called as a secondary reference electrode ok hope this is clear to you <coughs> excuse me so standard calomel electrode is when concentration of KCl is 3.5 molar its reduction potential is 0.24 volt <coughs> excuse me <coughs> now if I talk about normal calomel electrode so the concentration of KCl there is one normal and the EMF value is 0.268 similarly if I take a deci normal calomel electrode that is concentration of KCl is 0.1 more normal then we get the reduction potential as 0.338 volts ok. So these are the few value again you do not have to remember it it is just for your reference value I am just showing you that the EMF of this is fixed for different concentrations of chloride ion ok that we have already seen through the Nernst equation ok that is why we are calling this as a secondary reference electrode ok hope this is clear to you ok now like the most common confusion that every one of us face in this portion like when I was a kid when I was doing my JE preparation so this was a major <coughs> conceptual error I can say that was happening to me is there any similarity between a metal dipped in the metal ion solution and the same metal having a having a paste of insoluble salt dipped in a common ion is there any relationship between them. So just we are going to derive this, this relationship and we are going to understand how exactly both of the cells are related to each other because that is the main thing that happens in most of the problem solving ok. So let us just start with this ok. So let us consider a silver electrode dipped in a silver solution, silver ion solution ok. So suppose this is the reaction that is happening in it. So Ag plus aqueous is taking up an electron and changing into silver 
okay hope this is clear to you so we'll say that this is having a, a reduction potential of ag plus changing into ag okay so we have taken a silver rod dipped in its silver ion solution now if we take the same silver rod and we coat it with a insoluble salt that is agcl and dipped in a chloride ion solution it will become a metal metal insoluble salt ion electrode okay so in that case if a reduction is happening so we'll say that agcl is taking up an electron and changing into silver plus chloride ion okay so let us write the reduction potential as e not okay so we'll write this as cl negative i have already given you the cell notation how do you have we are writing this okay now we want to have some relationship between these two quantities okay so what i am going to do is i am going to form a full cell using these two okay datas so i am just going to reverse this reaction okay so when i reverse this reaction so i know that ag solid is changing into ag plus aqueous plus electron okay so when you are reversing the reaction so its emf would become minus e not ag plus ag okay hope this is clear to you now when we add both the reactions okay we can see that these electron will get cancel out silver solid silver solid will get cancel out so we'll be led with agcl changing into ag plus aqueous and cl negative aqueous okay so let us say that an equilibrium established over here okay so just write the gibbs free energy for the different electrode and for the overall electrode okay so the gibbs free energy change for the first electrode let this be delta g not 1 this would be minus n into e not into f now n in this case is 1 so we'll write n as 1 into f into e not so e not is e not cl negative ag cl ag okay similarly if we want to write the delta g for this reaction so delta g not 2 would be minus okay n is 1 f into e not now e not of this is minus e not of ag plus changing into ag that is minus of reduction potential of silver ion so this would become plus because we have to take that as minus so this would become e not ag plus changing into ag okay now because we have established a equilibrium over here so i will say that delta g not 3 of this reaction would be minus rt ln equilibrium constant now because the solution has attained equilibrium so the equilibrium constant of this would be concentration of ag plus into concentration of cl negative okay now we know that the product of concentration of the cation and anion of a sparingly soluble salt is also equal to the solubility product okay so ksp is basically the solubility product that is concentration of ag plus into concentration of cl negative okay now we know that when we have added the two reaction so energy always gets added up because energy is always a extensive property so delta g not is minus rt ln ksp delta g1 is minus f into e not okay cl negative ag cl ag plus delta g not 2 is f into e not ag plus changing into ag okay so i can write this as i will take f over here so this will become minus rt by f ln ksp okay i will take this term over here so i will just cancel out the negative sign so this will become e not cl negative ag cl ag minus e not ag plus into ag okay so this is the expression that we are getting now okay so i will just simplify this expression now i will say that e not of ag cl negative 
AgCl changing into Ag is equal to E naught of Ag plus Ag plus RT by F we know is 0 0.059 upon 1 log of Ksp. Okay. So, this is the relationship between the EMF of a Okay, so this is the relationship between the EMF of a metal metal ion, okay, insoluble salt and the metal metal ion electrode. Okay, so the EMF reduction potential of metal metal insoluble salt ion electrode is always equal to the E naught of metal metal ion electrode plus 0 0.059 upon n. N is basically one because both the cells are losing. Uh, 1 electrons okay so n is 1 into log of ksp okay the insoluble salt which you are taking ksp of that insoluble salt okay so this is how you derive okay so if you know the shortcut also if you know directly this formula this will also work okay so hope this is clear to you okay so just look at these steps first i have written this okay metal metal ion electrode then metal metal insoluble ion electrode we have reversed one equation and added them so that we are getting this equation now this expression at equilibrium represents the equation of solubility product. So the solubility product is concentration of Ag plus into concentration of Cl negative. Okay. So when you are adding these two, we will get the Gibbs free energy of the third reaction. Okay. So delta G naught 3 will be equal to delta G naught 1 plus delta G naught 2. So delta G naught 1 we have just calculated, delta G naught 2 we have just calculated as minus N into E naught into F. So we will get the expression between, okay, the relationship between the different EMFs. Okay. So, this is you should remember directly. Okay. Hope this is clear to you. So, we will say that E naught of any metal, metal insoluble salt, common ion electrode is always equal to the E naught of that metal in its metal ion solution plus 0 0.059 upon the number of electron exchange into log of solubility product of that metal insoluble salt. Okay, so, if you remember this, this formula is absolutely very useful. You can directly solve many good level questions on this formula straight away. Okay? So, just let me hope you have taken a snapshot of this. So, let me just do the same thing for calomel electrode. So, calomel electrode was basically okay, this. Okay? So, the calomel electrode was basically this. Okay? So, if we want to write a relationship between okay, the metal, metal insoluble salt, common ion and metal, metal ion electrode. So, we will write this as E naught of Cl negative Hg2Cl2 changing into Hg is equal to E naught Hg okay, changing into Hg 2 2 plus changing into Hg okay, plus 0 0.059 upon number of electron exchange would be 2 into log of solubility product of Hg 2 Cl 2. Okay. So, hope this is clear to you. So, the format of the expression is same. Okay. So, you are just going to write the relationship between the EMF of metal metal insoluble common ion electrode and metal ion electrode. Okay. Hope this is clear to you. So, till now we have done very important three half cells. The next important half cell is the redox electrode. Now, redox electrode is basically an electrode in which both the ions that are undergoing oxidation and reduction are present in the solution itself. Okay. Something like this. So, we have taken iron 2 plus. Okay. This is getting say oxidized into iron 3 plus. Okay. Now, because both of them are because both of them are in the aqueous solution. So, both of them are present in the solution itself. And we have dipped up platinum wire so that when the oxidation happens, the electron can come from this platinum wire into the cathodic half. Okay. So, this would represent a redox electrode. Okay. So, we will write this as because if this is acting as an anode, we know that this is acting as an anode because oxidation is taking place. So, for writing the notation of anode, what we say is we will come to the platinum wire and then go inside the solution. So, we catch the platinum wire and we when we go into the solution, we will get both iron 2 plus aqueous and iron 3 plus aqueous. 
So, this is how you write this in the <coughs> notation in the anodic half and if you look at the cathodic half, ok. So, the cathodic half or the cathode reduction would be happening. So, iron 3 plus is taking up the electron and changing into iron 2 plus, ok. So, this would be happening in the cathode, ok. So, if it is acting as a cathode, now we know that if it is acting as a cathode, we will enter into this through the salt bridge. So, we will write and counter the iron first. So, iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus because they are in the same phase. So, they are just separated by a comma and not by a bar. Then we will take the platinum, ok. So, we can write the EMF of the half set also using the Nernst equation, ok. So, I hope this is clear to you. So, we have dealt with four types of basic electrodes, gas, gas ion electrode, metal, metal ion electrode, metal, metal insoluble salt, common ion electrode and then the redox electrode. There are two or three more types of electrodes like <coughs> queen hydron electrode, ok. Then there is a glass electrode, then there is a metal, metal amalgam electrode. We are going to discuss subsequently, but these four are the basic of electrochemistry that you should know. Most of the question that would be formed would be from these only, ok. So, just let us solve one question now before we end the session for today. So, there is a cell that has been given to us, ok. This is a cell which has been given to us. I am just showing you the basic problem which right now we have done, ok. So, we need to understand how the half cells are present over here and we will solve the question, ok. So, this is absolutely very easy. If you are clear with the all the half cells and the reactions that are happening in the half cells, then this becomes a cakewalk, ok. So, we have to find the potential of this cell, ok, this has been given. So, we know that this half is the oxidation or the anodic half and this half is the cathodic half or the reduction half, ok. So, some E naught value has been given to us, we need to find the potential of this cell. So, what I will do, three things that I have to do, I have to write the first anodic reaction, <coughs> reaction that is ha happening at anode. So, we know that at anode oxidation would take place. So, cerium 3 plus would get oxidized into cerium 4 plus plus electron. Both of them are in aqueous state, ok. And at the cathode, reduction would take place. Now, reduction of dichromate is taking place. We can see that dichromate is changing into chromium plus 3 because chromium here is in plus 6 state. So, this is changing into plus 3 state. So, dichromate ion ok, is changing into Cr3 plus in acidic medium. So, we will write just this equation. So, this is taking a 14 electrons, sorry 14 H plus and 6 electron and changing into 2 Cr plus 3 plus 7 water, ok. So, this is the reaction that is happening. So, to write the overall reaction, we have to multiply this with 6 and we will add them, ok. So, when you multiply with this with 6, so they get cancelled out. So, we will get 6 cerium 3 plus aqueous plus dichromate ion aqueous plus 14 H plus aqueous changing into cerium 4 plus 6 cerium 4 plus and 2 chromium plus 3 and 7 water, ok. So, this is how you write the full equation. So, E naught of this cell would be because reduction is happening of dichromate ion. So, reduction potential of dichromate ion. Now, this has been given to us as minus 1.3. Just look at the okay, terms that has given to you. Okay. So, this is obviously a negative charge. So, this is the reduction potential of dichromate ion which is given to us as okay. whatever data is given to us, we will just use that. We will not use our brain whether it is given correct or not. So, whatever data is given to us, we will use that. So, this is basically minus 1.3. Okay minus reduction potential of anode. So, reduction potential of anode would be, ok, this has been given as plus 1.7, ok, because this is the, you have to just observe because this is the oxidation potential. Cerium 3 plus is getting oxidized into cerium 4 plus, ok. So, in this case, the reduction potential of cerium 4 plus would be negative of this. So, this is 1.7 volt. So, you have to just write this as 1.7. So, the overall E naught cell would be minus 3. Now, this is coming negative. I will tell you why because the value is plus 1.3, but ok, let us take it whatever value is given to us because the reduction potential of dichromate ion is 
plus 1.3 but whatever data has been given in the question we'll use only that okay so e naught cell we got it as minus 3 volt okay so hope you have understood this now we are just going to write the nurst equation so this would become e cell equal to e naught cell minus 0 0.059 upon number of electron exchange you can see is 6 okay divide by 6 into log of concentration of if you look at the main reaction this is cerium 4 plus raised to power 6 into concentration of chromium plus 3 raised to power 2 divided by concentration of cerium 3 plus raised to power 6 into concentration of dichromate ion into concentration of H plus raised to power 14. Okay, so this is the expression. A tedious one to write, but again a very standard and a very easy question. So the concentration of cerium 4 plus is given as 1 molar, chromium 3 plus is given as 1 molar, cerium 3 plus is given as 2 molar, dichromate is given as 2 molar, H plus is given as 14, uh, H plus is given as 1 molar. So you just write those value, you will get the value of E cell. Okay. So hope this question is clear to you. So what we are doing, we are just identifying the half cells, the known half cells which we have done. So we are writing the anodic reaction, we are writing the cathodic reaction, okay, we are writing the overall reaction, we are finding out the E0 cell, that is reduction potential of cathode minus reduction potential of anode. So we are getting the value of E0 cell, we are using the Nernst equation and we are finding the E cell of the given cell. Okay. So I hope this is clear to you and I hope you understood the concept that is delivered today in case you are having any problem so in case you face any difficulty in any of the uh, concept you can just write to us so that we can get back to you okay so i hope you liked the lecture you understood the main concept that was taught today so again again it was a theoretical lecture but from now on because we have almost covered all the theoretical aspect of this chapter only two or three main theories are left so next two lectures will be mostly on problem solving Okay, this is a very important chapter. Make sure that you know the theory well. You are versed with all the theory and you have a good level of problem solving as well. So you can start solving the daily practice problem sheet. In case you are facing any problem, again, just write to us so that we will be able to help you in a much effective manner. Okay, so I hope everyone around you in your family is safe and healthy and you are taking care of yourself in this pandemic time. Okay, so this is an image signing off for now. We'll catch next week for some more interesting sessions on electrochemistry. Thank you, students.